What's going on everybody and welcome back to Airport CEO. We have a lot of work to do in this episode if we want to get our commercial flights going and I think that's the goal of this episode. I'd like to sign the contract and get some flights at least on their way in and yes we got a few things to do but before we get into that I want to talk about a couple minor changes that I made and this was really out of the comment section of last time. Someone mentioned that the door that I put in down here was not really secure because there's no security checkpoint. And so we went ahead with some renovation work here of the bathrooms. They are a little bit smaller, but they're still sizable enough. But we also got a really interesting little office out of it. So yes, whoever gets this, which I believe was the uh, procurement director, it's, it's kind of small. It's a little bit of a closet, but you know, he's got a little armchair in there, so I guess he'll be okay with it. But yes, we've gotten this all sort of situated. There was a little bit of floor work done in between episodes two. Nothing uh, really changed in any of that aspect. But yes, let's get into what we need to do. We are going to need to get our boarding area situated. So we're going to need boarding desks and we need to put these in. And these are kind of weird because they're three blocks like tall, but all of the, the ramps and the doors are like two blocks so it doesn't fit nice and centered so what I like to do is change them to orient that way and then we'll just uh, I think we're gonna need to put some gate stands or gate seating in here as well and I don't really know how much is ideal but I'm thinking maybe uh, like three down here and then we'll just go through and do the rest of them all right, so that is the seating and boarding area pretty much done. I got a little carried away and I started doing the floors and everything. But yes, we have about five or six uh, little areas of seating per gate. And then up here, it's a little weird because we had the two small gates right next to each other. And the gap in between these is for the passengers. Now, these boarding uh, desks don't have like queues that you can put in. So the passengers, before they board, kind of all just pool up behind them so if you use the arrows when you go to place these down that's the way the passengers are going so they're gonna pull up above it and then go through the arrows and then into their gates so that's why we have a little bit of space on each of these which is it should be okay and if we have to adjust it if we have like way more space than we need we can put another row of seats in or whatever so yes this is looking good so far so the next step that we have to do is connect each of these desks up to their stand so it's pretty simple it's pretty much whichever one is right next to it is the stand for it so yes we just got to go through and do all of this and then our next step is to come all the way down here and go to our check-in desks and what we're gonna have to do is connect these up to our baggage bay and since we only have one right now we'll just connect all of these up so what I'm thinking is that since all of these check-in desks are on the right side of the terminal and all of these stalls are on the right side, we're only going to be using these four for now. And then when we expand the terminal to have the other sides in, we'll open these up and hopefully this will be able to handle all of the capacity. This is also going to cut down in the staff that we're going to need, so that's going to be pretty good. Since these are all connected up and we're not going to be using these, let's go ahead and deactivate all of these. And then what we're going to want to do is start to hire our staff. And I'm thinking we only want to open two of these security points for now. So let's go ahead and do that as well. So the next step is we're going to have to go in and hire our staff. So we are getting really close at this point to actually getting some flights in. So let's go ahead and run the game a little bit just so we get some staff applying. And some of these people are like really cheap I mean we could get them but their skills weren't that great so let's go kind of middle middle of the uh, lane here and get some of these guys so how many did we just hire now this is the one thing about this game so far that I kind of have a little bit of an issue with and that is there's really no place that it shows you that you need like X amount of staff like we've hired now four of our airport staff and they're all gonna work down here at these four check-ins now we're also gonna need some staff for these so like in total in this little area right now we need about uh, what seven staff members but there's really no place that it tells you that you need it and these I think even need two staff per so yeah I mean you can go into the operations and into job tasks but this really doesn't help you all that much so 
Yeah, that's the one thing about this, especially with like security. Like these big security stands take up four security employees. So you need to kind of make sure that you have all of them before you can get going. And then all of the desks agents and all of the other kind of staff members, it's just, it's really hard to figure out how many staff members you need in this game right now. I just, I feel like they can improve upon that at some point. So let's go ahead and keep hiring our staff and hopefully these fill up. Now I want to double check. I want to make sure that these info desks need two. It re requires at least one airport staff to operate. So yes, it needs just one, but I believe it could have two. Now the boarding desks, do they have just staff? requires at least one staff to function. So yes, they are staff. Now, the reason I'm checking that thoroughly is because there are different kinds of staff members. So there's your security, which of course we're gonna need about eight more of those. So let's go ahead and just hire those. I'm not gonna be super picky hiring these people. So that's four. And then let's get a, a few more in here. One, two, we need two more, one. Eh, we'll go with the cheap guy. Uh, so yes, they're all kind of showing up to work now. This is great. So at least we can see. So you see, these information desks have now filled up with two each. So no one has actually came back to this yet. Or are they moving back into here? No, we still need to figure that out. We should probably open these stands up as well. And now that we have everything kind of hooked up, we should be able to go into our operations and open up our baggage handling. No, we need four ramp agents to do so. So let's go ahead and hire at least four of those. So the ramp agents are the people who then go and work at the baggage and then they come out to the actual like tarmac area and all of these stalls and they come out and service the planes and put the bags on the planes. So we're actually gonna need a lot of those. So we'll kind of work on that as we go. All right, so our staff is arriving and just kind of parking themselves in the staff room, which is fine. Honestly, I think we can probably downsize our workforce for our construction at this point. We have 34. Maybe we keep like 10 on hand and just to construct more things because right now we're not going to be doing much, if any, construction work. So let's go ahead and dismiss those guys. And then what we need to do is actually go ahead and buy a jet fuel tanker because we don't have one of those yet. We can open our baggage handling at this point. Uh, ramp agent service round. So we need to actually open up the service round first and then we can open up our baggage handling system. So that's all set. And we are super close to doing what we were planning on for this episode. So let's go ahead and activate this. Verify that the baggage bay is connected to a check-in check desk, a stand, a baggage claim area, and service road before activating. So we're also going to need to connect the baggage bay up to our baggage claim. So let's go ahead and do that. Boom. And then what we're going to have to do is open up these stalls for commercial airlines. So that will give us the option to connect the baggage bay to them, which is nice. And I, if I'm being honest, I just spent about 10 minutes trying to figure out why I couldn't connect that up. But it was just because that toggle was off. So if you're having problems like I did, just make sure you got everything properly squared away. So it would have been nice to know that beforehand. But or at least have the option to do it without needing to open up the, you know, commercial side of things, but it's fine. So let's just connect all of these up, and then I think we're just about good to activate this. So we are now all set to take baggage in and put them on planes. So that's all squared away, and I think it's finally time for us to grab a contract so let's go figure out which contract we want now i'm thinking we may want to start small or cheap i'm not really sure which we want to go for let's go for cheap just because we still don't have a lot of the facilities that some of the larger airlines are probably going to want like the shops and all that kind of stuff so uh we're going to need to get seven light class flights requiring small stands in that's fine and then seven successful flights to complete. Okay, so it's just gonna be handling these small stands. So that's fine. Let's go ahead and sign that contract. And then what we're gonna have to do is go schedule those flights. Now, this honestly took me too long to figure out how to do when I was first playing this game. And that's because this flight planner doesn't look like a button down here. It just looks like text. So like when I was scanning 
how to figure out how to get flights in. I could not figure out just to click there. So, yes, we should have seven flights coming in. And tomorrow, let's go to Saturday and schedule these out. So, as you can see, we have all of our stands all set up here. We should, we could probably rename all of these to make them kind of, uh, you know, make some sense there. So, let's go ahead and put these in. And then we could stagger them just a little bit. Or, you know what, it's going to be our first day. Let's offset them. And honestly, we could probably get most of this contract done all on Saturday. So that's going to be nice. And then we, this is basically just going to be a test run. So actually, I kind of want to space these out a little bit, but I don't think I can do that. So uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll, this is going to be a great test run for our airport to make sure we have all of the staff we need and all of uh, everything squared away here. And these small flights are only going to have a handful of passengers. So, yes, this is definitely going to be a great test run. But, you know, before we go ahead and go to Saturday to figure that out, let's go ahead and jump into our cargo area. Now, we're going to have to delete the cargo annihilator because in between episodes, I've went through and I've researched the bag scanners. And as you can see, there's five versions of this level two bag scanner. And we're going to have to then scan these rejected bags for specific items. And then we're going to have to destroy them. So we'll put the destroyer down here. And hopefully this is going to work out for us. I don't think this is going to be enough space. So we may have to like double back a little bit. Or we can go in like a circular pattern with these. And then all of the rejected bags can just go to the interior. And then get shipped around over to the cargo destroyer. So yes, we're going to be redesigning our, our system just a little bit. And now I'm kind of regretting getting all of the workers sent home but you know we'll handle it it'll be fine and okay so the big i think bag scanner that we want to get first is the explosives because i feel like that's the biggest safety hazard and then i think probably drugs and then probably you know guns and here we go this is just gonna we're gonna have to figure out an efficient way to use this room and luckily it's it's big enough that we can try to kind of experiment and then eventually get there's a level three bag scanner that we are gonna need and uh i don't know what comes with that so that'll be interesting when we get there so there we go this is looking good now so the next step would be to get all of the rejected bags and take them out of these onto a conveyor belt that goes down to our cargo destroyer so yes this is a way better system and then of course we're gonna have to link this back up to the good uh the good belt that takes all of the cargo and puts it onto the planes so let's do that before the next day comes hopefully our staff can get all of these kind of set up and um you know what maybe we get one more bag scanner because we have plenty of uh, we have so much money right now it's fine but uh yeah this bag scanner is four hundred dollars apparently or no this is the thing here so yeah bag scanners are fairly expensive and they are about twenty five thousand a piece now money is kind of funny if we want to pardon the rhyme because if we have a bag with a ludicrous amount of money we're just gonna send it to be destroyed instead of confiscating it which is kind of funny to me because you're not supposed to destroy money like that unless you're like a government agency so that's interesting so whatever uh all right there was what one more of these that we need and that is organics and i think that's about it we have five and then this will be our fifth one so yes we have plenty of room for the level three security and i'm wondering if we want to go ahead and unlock that now actually no before we do that we want to go into procurement and we want to get our uh, Jet A1 fuel truck. So let's go ahead and order that. We also have to get our service truck. Because how else are they going to put bags on the plane? So let's get all of that squared away. And then let's just go ahead and finish up our baggage belt system here. So this is going to be pretty good here. All right, that's all squared away now. This is looking like a proper baggage system for our airport, which is going to be really nice. I'm really excited to see how this all works tomorrow. And what we're going to have to do is make sure that we have all of the staff that we need. Now, the big one that we want to make sure of is our uh, ramp agents. So we have how many of these on staff right now? One, two, three, 
four, five, six. So six of those, and then four of them will be on the baggage bay, two per side. And then we're going to need a bunch of them to then go out and service the planes. Now, I am not sure how many is ideal per stall, but we have two extra, and I'm thinking we may want more. And let's just get a couple more for now. And then I'm thinking, I'm wondering if we want to get a few more airport staff. I mean, we have a bunch of these guys already, but I, I feel like at this point you can never have too much airport staff. So let's go ahead and hire a few more just because they have to work the info desks. They have to work the check-in desks and they have to work these boarding desks. Now, we're also probably going to want to get a couple of these service technicians and we will hire, you know what, let's just hire two for now. I don't think the service techs are a, like, super high demand position, although I could be very wrong about that. So, you guys can let me know in the comments, I believe. <laughs> I mean, if I'm doing that wrong. But yeah, I just, this, this game's a little weird in that it just, it doesn't tell you how many positions you should ha have for your airport. So, and the more I look at this, the more I'm thinking I want to extend this service road out to this side. And this side of the terminal is going to be kind of identically set up to this side, except we're not going to need another fuel depot. So what I'm thinking is we put a vehicle depot over here. And this is going to accomplish a couple things for us. Uh, the first thing is that it's going to let all of our vehicles travel way less than they would have to otherwise. So all of our, like, the service trucks and this, hopefully this jet fuel A1 truck is going to go to this depot since it's closest. The other thing it's going to accomplish is, I guess, a little bit of symmetry. I'm not really sure what I was going for there in, in saying it's going to accomplish more than one thing. It's primarily just going to be to make the route more efficient for our service truck and our jet fuel truck. So let's go ahead and plop that in. And then let's go ahead and get our vehicle depot. So we'll just plop that in right there. I believe this is on the same plane. Yes, it looks good. And yes, I'm really, really excited and I love how this airport's turning out so far. I just noticed that we still don't have our baggage belt system all set up yet. So let's go ahead and get this squared away once and for all. And that should be it for now. And that's going to be pretty good. Now, while we're waiting for Saturday to roll in and it actually just ticked over, let's get started on our first shop. Now... What I want to do is grab the shop room and just drag this out to what I think I want about, uh, you know, in square footage. So I'm thinking that's probably good. And then we'll go ahead and check out the contracts just to make sure we're fulfilling them. So it looks like all we're going to get is a level one star uh, contract in here, which is fine just because of the shapes or the size of the room. But let's go ahead and get a cashier desk and at least two shelving units in here. Now... This game right now, I feel like the like size of shops is a little weird because of I don't I don't know. It only is requiring us to have two shelving units in here. But when you look at this, it's it I mean you can get like two of these in, no problem. And then there's just a massive amount of space for that required contract. So I feel like it's probably due to be like uh I don't know revised or a little bit tweaked just to get the the sizing and everything kind of specked out properly so here we go let's go ahead and plop this in as well and i don't know when you look at it like this it's not that bad of a uh, a size requirement and let's go ahead and grab a couple of these doors and just fill out this space so yes this is all set although we're gonna want to make this look a little nicer so let's go ahead and grab some of the flooring and put that in and you know what while we're over here, we should probably finish out this flooring as well just to get it all kind of squared away and situated while we're over and thinking about it. So, yes, this looks good, and we just need to, you know, keep the same theme going with this blue carpeting. Now, eventually, we're going to upgrade this because the blue carpeting really looks pretty... Uh, it, it's not the greatest, in my opinion, at least. Uh, I feel like we could do better, and I feel like hardwood floors and, like, that kind of, you know, feel is way more upscale. But we're just a little dwarf airport right now. We're still growing, and we'll get to the point where eventually we are going to be, you know, upgrading things and making things look a lot nicer. 
And yeah, we'll get to that point eventually. But for now, we're just kind of rolling with it. Our first passengers look like they have just arrived and they are getting ready to go check in. So all of our staff should be kind of moving to where they need to go now. And I'm wondering if we should hire another janitor. And I'm not really sure at this point. Maybe later we will because I don't know how dirty this is going to get. But yeah, okay. So all of our staff is kind of going to where they need to go to. Now, this is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and see how much these queues fill up. And I'm not thinking we're going to need more than, you know, more queue space for all of this. And actually, while I'm down here, I'm, I'm wondering if we should put some of these flight info panels up here. And I think we should. I mean, that's one of the things you want to see right when you get through security. Recheck the time on your flight. Recheck if it's, like, delayed or not. And then go ahead and head off to your, you know, destination. So... Let's grab a few of these. I don't really know where we want to put these, though. Maybe, like, around here and then around here could be good. Just because the space is a little awkward. It's just basically an employee area where they're going to be going in and out of their employee room. And then I'm thinking a few of these just, like, throughout the area down here is probably not a bad idea. And that should just about do it. And then maybe just one in the middle here as well. So, yes, looking good. I'm very curious to see where these passengers then go up here. So I'm thinking they're going to want to get as close to their gate as possible. And they're going to want to just sit. So these are going to be probably the ideal spot for them to sit. Now I'm thinking eventually we put some of those up here. The uh, gate seating up here as well. The middle of this as we planned out before is going to be for shops. And I think we could probably plan one of those out right now. And is our baggage system working? Oh, yeah, they are actually going through here. This is cool. You can see them underneath the ground, which is, I guess, interesting. But, yes, they are coming out over here. And they are just about ready. Okay, this is put in, too. So we should probably go ahead and hook up the service road to it. So hopefully our trucks will be able to come up here and, you know, chill out. So this is looking good. I am a little concerned that we only have one of our ramp agents down here. So I'm thinking maybe we want to hire more, although it looks like most of them are probably just throughout the airport right now. And this guy is complaining about something. I'm going to the security queue, so I guess he's complaining that he needs to go through security, whatever. He's got an expedited place to go through security, so he can just shut up. <laughs> I mean, there's no room to complain. You don't have to wait with all the passengers, so it's fine. Do we have our service trucks and everything in place yes we have our service truck we have our fuel truck for the av gas and our jet fuel a1 truck all sitting down here and i don't know what these smaller planes here it is our first commercial plane is coming into the station so let's go ahead and check out what's happening here it's still dark out which is cool because you know airports function way early and they go kind of late at night and it's kind of weird that airports closed down you know it, it's a weird thing to think about you think they'd operate like all throughout the night but a lot of them actually take time off let's go ahead and check through our turnaround monitor to see what's going on our service round is in progress the baggages unloading needs to happen the refueling needs to happen and then the loading and all of that kind of stuff needs to happen as well so we do have a, a ramp agent over here checking out the plane doing its service check um it's looking like we should probably hire a few more of those guys so let's go ahead and do that right now I, my philosophy at this point is you can never have too many ramp agents uh just because there's so many tasks that they have to do and if you don't have enough it creates so much like so many headaches there's so many like uh, delays and stuff and when you delay planes you get people backed up in your terminal especially the way we staggered our flights so close together it's gonna be kind of important for us to you know make sure everything's squared away now I'm hoping that the construction guys get up here to put these in soon because we'll be able to then have all of our planes that need to be or all of our trucks that need to be over here hopefully come over here and there's no way to assign them which is kind of unfortunate I don't believe so uh whatever so our staff is loading up the bags onto the plane and the passengers soon should be lining up to board the plane so yes everything is ready and their boarding is slowly but surely getting there I mean this guy was I think just about ready to get on but 
All right, so here they go. They are complaining about food, so we will get that in eventually. All right, our first successful commercial flight is now taxiing toward the runway and ready to take off. Now, I don't really like that it clipped through the ATC tower, and when we get the larger commercial lines in, it'll, you know, be even more clippy, but uh, I, I guess we'll take it for now. It's fine. Oh my, we have so many flights ready to leave. I'm thinking we may want to get a second runway, and to do that, I'm not really sure. I may want to, like, unlock this or unlock this. Now, you can actually do that, but you have to edit the save files, which is fine. I'm comfortable doing that, so that may be an option sooner or later. But, yeah, this is kind of absurd. There's just so many planes ready to taxi or ready to take off, and they're just kind of getting bottlenecked up here. So, unfortunately, uh, they may not be departing on time per se, but at least they got out of our terminal on time, which is great. The one thing that I don't really understand, and if you guys can help me out, that'd be great, but it's the shifts. I don't understand how this works. Now, I you don't have to, like, hire employees for specific shifts, so I think it might just be, like, a break time type situation. Like, they'll only work for five hours, and they'll take a break, unless they actually go home after five hours. I'm honestly not sure. I'll let you guys let me know if you know. It's looking like our security is pretty good at this point. It's handling these small flights at least fairly well. Now the big test is going to be when we get the larger commercial flights in, so the medium-sized commercial flights. That's gonna be the test that we are gonna have to wait for. This is gonna be a massive stress load on everything at our airport so it's it's looking like we'll be fine now these little info desks are really strange now i'm, I'm not sure maybe we want to delete a couple of them for now or maybe not i'm not entirely sure if that's a great idea honestly i don't know what impact they play in the game at this point i don't think i've ever seen anybody go up to them and maybe it's because they're over here maybe they should be in the secure zone i don't know you guys can let me know if i'm doing that wrong all right we have our second flight of the day in ready to get loaded up and it's looking like everything's running fairly smooth it's looking like we're actually pulling in a decent amount of income right now so i'm wondering if we want to go ahead and build out our first like food stall so let's go uh, let's let's do it let's do that gonna need to measure this out so this is gonna be 15 across and then 15 across is there so the wall and then boom so yes it looks like we have a 14 by whatever size we want to play with here so 14 by 13 and then let's see if that's gonna meet this, the requirements of a contract so that one is big enough for a level two or a two star company at least so that's good all right so it looks like just the level two which is actually fine i'm thinking we're gonna want to sign the level two contract and then we're gonna need four fridges and a cafe counter so let's go ahead and build that out and this is gonna be a really prime spot for a food stand so we're gonna want a lot of doors and i'm thinking we want doors on like all four sides of this just because it's got traffic on each and i'm thinking we leave some space in between each of these rooms just for like passengers to run through or whatever and yeah it's gonna be pretty good i really really love how this airport's turning out i mean every like from the baggage being up here to the jet fuel being close to the stands to the general aviation functioning fairly well except for these two planes whatever uh it's looking like it's a really efficient airport i'm just wondering how it's gonna look once we get some really big flights in and then i'm wondering how well we're gonna be able to like stagger those flights you know are we gonna need to hire a bunch of more staff probably are we gonna need to then you know adjust and make sure all of our systems are you know ready to go yeah but when we get everything sorted out it's gonna be really nice i'm really wondering what our bottleneck is gonna be when it comes to just having possibly hundreds of, of passengers flowing through everything so that looks like our food requirement is pretty much met here and we have a few more contracts in, and it doesn't look like we meet any of the three-star requirements. So let's just go ahead and sign Swift Veg. That's fine. And yes, we'll wait for this to get built out. And I think that's going to basically do it for this episode. We've gotten a lot of what I wanted to do accomplished. And what I'm thinking is in the next episode, we'll go ahead and put a ton of stress on all of our facilities. We'll go ahead and book a few of the major flights 
and see how well everything copes. So that's looking good. If you're looking forward to that, leave me a thumbs up. If you dislike this video in any way, go ahead and leave me a thumbs down. I've asked a few questions that you guys can answer in the comments. Let me know, help me out, make this series great. And that's going to be just about it. So guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here in Airport CEO.